Whether it's for billing clients or time management, tracking your time is really essential to teams and individual professionals. And with recent enhancements to formulas and the new button property, we can finally streamline our time tracking within our cohesive Notion systems. So I'm going to share a simple and powerful framework for tracking your time in Notion that's inspired by the most popular time tracking apps like Toggle and Harvest. First, I'll walk through the system in its final polished form, and then for you Notion Power users, we'll take a look under the hood to see how it works. And for you to add the system to your own workspace, I've made it available within two templates. The first includes the sample databases you'll see in this walkthrough, but only with the time tracking features. And then the full bulletproof framework now includes a simplified version of the time tracking system, and that connects it to other powerful features for really maximizing Notion. So I'll link to both templates from the video description, and of course they're already available to members of Notion A to Z, along with all other Notion VIP templates and resources. So you know my number one rule for using Notion is to structure all information within related master databases and then access it through contextually filtered views. So at the crux of this time tracking system is a database of time entries. And each entry relates to either a project or a company, which are already master databases within the Bulletproof framework and nearly every Notion workspace I develop. So that relationship allows us to summarize logged time by project or company and generate insightful reports for invoicing, managing retainers, and other needs. And there's actually a fourth database at work behind the scenes, which I'll explain to those advanced users. So you'll typically manage time entries from linked views within projects or companies, but let's open it directly to explore its properties. The title populates automatically with a reference to the created time, but it really serves no purpose. It's just a required text field for every Notion database. And then we have relation properties to connect each entry to a project or company, which would typically be a client. And then we have a person property that offers another method of segmenting and summarized time entries. It populates automatically with the person who creates it. And then in the comments property, that user can describe what they did or provide other helpful context around the entry. And for entries related to a project, the billable property indicates whether the time should be invoiced at the project's rate. And then total hours displays the total hours logged for the entry. And timer control is a button for starting and stopping the timer. And within timer status, you can see whether the timer is running or stopped. So within our projects database, you'll see a field for each project's billable rate. Then we have total hours logged, billable hours logged, and then total fee, which multiplies the billable hours by the project's rate. So within this database-centric approach, you could easily connect this to invoices and other financial databases to track paid, unpaid, and uninvoiced hours. And then right from any project, we can click Create Time Entry to start a new time entry that's automatically related to that project. And when you do that, the project automatically opens, and within it, you can see a filtered view of its time entries, with the total hours summed at the bottom and that new entry running at the top. And if we click the Start Stop button, you can see that that stops the timer. And then the company's database works very much the same way. As I said, it's typically used for clients. But rather than tracking billable hours and fees, it manages prepaid hours, which could be ad hoc or a monthly retainer. So the reserved hours property contains those prepaid hours. Now, I simply maintain a running total, but for monthly retainers, you could automatically add hours each month. And you might also want to adjust the view to manage only the current month's time rather than the all-time accumulation. And then logged hours totals the time entries related to the company. And to calculate remaining hours, it subtracts the logged hours from the reserved hours. Just like projects, we have a button for easily starting a new time entry for any company. That opens the company's page where you'll find two linked views of time entries. One displays the company's entries for the current month, and the other displays all entries for the company grouped by month. So back in the time entries database, we have three reporting views. One groups entries by project, another groups them by company, and then the third groups them by person. And beside each group's title, we have the sum of its hours. And typically, you'll want these views to represent a particular time frame. So I've made that easy with a month offset property, where the value is zero for the current month, negative one for the previous month, and so forth. And each reporting view is pre-filtered for that property, so as you wish, you can simply adjust the value. 
And there you have a really streamlined time tracking system that connects to your broader Notion workspace with the essential features of dedicated time tracking apps. And like I said, you can access it as a standalone template or as part of the full bulletproof workspace. Now for the more advanced Notion users, let's take a quick look at what's happening under the hood. There's another database at work behind the scenes. It's called Timestamps. And when you start or stop the timer for a time entry, it creates a new timestamp that's related to that time entry. So if an entry has an odd number of timestamps, it's running. And if the timestamp count is even, it's stopped. So to calculate the total time, we have a sophisticated formula that orders the timestamps, finds the time difference between each pair, and then adds those differences. So in the projects database, the create time entry button is configured to create a new time entry, relate it to the project, and then open the project. And the button in companies works the same way. It just adds a step to uncheck the billable property. And then lastly, the time entries database has an automation that creates a new timestamp when a new entry is created. That's the entry's first timestamp, so that starts the timer. And that's essentially how this system works, but definitely duplicate it for a closer inspection. And feel free to comment with any questions.